Welcome. This episode shows how to accurately join two pieces of laminate or formica together. It's important for you to know that this is the only approach that I've seen that will work. Even if you attempt to merge two laminate edges from newly manufactured pieces, my experience has shown that they will not merge perfectly together and form a uniform joint. These joints will most likely have irregular spaces with variable joint distances along the bordering sides. Consequently, this will make your project look like it was crafted with substandard workmanship. I developed this video by building a bar in my basement, which I will later feature in a multi-part series on how to finish a basement. Please note that the bar you see is approximately 90% complete. In addition, I purchased the laminate in this video from Home Depot, which was manufactured by the Wilson Art Company. Formica brand laminates, which are also popular, are similarly available at Home Depot, Lowe's, and other retailers. Lastly, this joint was absolutely necessary for me to build because the width of my bar exceeds the width of the largest Wilson Art piece available from Home Depot, which was 5 by 12 feet. Knowing that I needed additional laminate for other portions of my finished basement, I also purchased a 4 by 8 sheet of Wilson Art laminate and joined these two pieces as shown in this video. I'll demonstrate the problems with joining two pieces of laminate, show you how to overlap both laminate pieces, set your saw's cutting depth, and clamp a cutting fence or guide in place, test the fence alignment and perform the actual cut, remove and clean up the laminate remnants, and finish up by gluing the new laminate in place and filling the joint. From left to right, these tools and material include a Dremel saw max or an equivalent precision saw, metal cutting fence, which in this case is a large carpenter square, clamps, calipers, 60 grit sandpaper, sharp chisel, masking tape for reference lines, laminate contact cement with a throwaway paint roller or paintbrush, dowels, laminate roller, and Wilson Art color match cock. This shows the irregular surface that I encountered when trying to join these two edges from the manufacturer. Regardless of where I moved the laminate to adjust it, I ran into small irregular gaps. With the laminate on the right permanently bonded to the top of the bar, I overlapped the left or second piece on top of the permanently bonded piece. I then set my Dremel saw max for a cutting depth of two thicknesses of the laminate, thereby enabling me to barely scar the top of the plywood bar, which is not a problem. This enabled me to simultaneously cut both pieces of laminate with an even line between them so I could perfectly marry them up together by gluing the second piece of laminate to the top of the bar. The next step using my caliper, I measured the distance between the outside edge of the saw blade and the right edge of the Dremel saw max base. I then duplicated that measurement from the left edge of my cutting fence to the center of the overlap pieces of laminate. Once again, I'm using a large carpenter square for my cutting fence. This will force the saw max to cut the distance exactly along the center of the joint. Prior to cutting, I checked this distance by unplugging the saw and pulling the saw max down the cutting fence to ensure the saw max blade was going to provide an accurate cut along this line with a depth of two pieces of laminate. As you can see, as I move the saw max down the cutting fence, the saw max will cut the laminate precisely along this line. With my saw max plugged in, I'm ready to make the cut at this time. Okay, as you can see, we have a very good cut with both edges perfectly parallel. I'll now brush off the laminate and check to see how well these two edges marry up. For the laminate on the right, which is bonded to the plywood bar top, there's a very small trail of remnant remaining that is glued in place. It held really well. In addition, this trail, which varies in width, 
demonstrates the previous irregularity of the edge. Using my wood chisel, I'm going to remove the strip at this time. As shown, that easily removed it. I'm also scraping away the glue that remained. I'm now gently running 60 grit sandpaper over the new laminate to be glued in place as well as over the chiseled area. Let's see how well our two pieces of laminate line up now. As you can see, our results are pretty good. There are no gaps or areas with irregular distances between the adjoining pieces of laminate. We are now going to add some reference points. So when we return with the glued piece of laminate on the left, I can immediately move it to its precise position before the glue sets up. Okay, to expedite the film, I've applied Weldwood contact cement to the bottom of the left piece of laminate and to the top of the bar and allowed both of these surfaces to dry for approximately 15 minutes. To keep the laminate from permanently bonding to the plywood while making alignment adjustments, I've added these five dowels. In addition, I added these dowel stiffeners to the top of the laminate with painter's tape to keep the laminate from curling up on the edges. I am now aligning the reference points that we previously added. I want to ensure that we have a perfect alignment. As you see, we did not have one. The alignment between the two pieces is good at this time. I'm pulling the first dowel. Working to the left, I'm pulling the dowels out and removing the stiffeners so I can use the laminate roller. I'm continuing to roll it out. And be careful not to apply too much force to the edge because the laminate overhang will easily break. Okay. That completes the installation. The laminate is installed. As shown, we successfully achieved a good line with minimal spacing between the two pieces of laminate. Please note that I have not yet filled the joint with the Wilson Art caulk, which will make it look much better. And at this time, I will run my router, which has a ball bearing cutting bit around the top edge of the bar to remove the excess laminate. Okay, using my Wilson Art Color Match Cock, I filled the small groove between the two laminate pieces and achieved good results. As you can see, it does a great job of camouflaging that union. That's really about as good as you can achieve. As shown, Wilson Art is a great product. It looks almost as good as granite, 
On the first view, most people think, in fact, it is granite. As a do-it-yourselfer, you'll save approximately 90% of the cost of a granite installation. So, for approximately $300, this Wilson Art bar top compares to a $3,000 granite solution. Next, I'll finish adding Wilson Art beveled edge around the bar perimeter. As I mentioned early in this episode, I will cover this in detail in my forthcoming multi-part series on how to finish your basement, which includes episodes on how to build this bar. This concludes my session on how to accurately join two pieces of laminate with minimal space between their adjoining edges. At this time, I'm moving on to my next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. All of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it. <laughs>